Let's talk about probably the most important command and control mechanism in this game, um, the decision dice. Um, now you remember that your army is broken down into force commands, which are roughly speaking brigades or combat commands, camp groups, and those in turn are broken down into individual formations, which are about battalion level. And the way the decision dice mechanism works is that each turn, each force command, rolls 1d6, uh, and that tells you how many of its battalions it can move um, that turn. Um, now, so far so uninnovative, that sort of pip dice mechanism have been around since certainly the early 90s with DBA. But the twist here is that the in these rules you have five different colours or levels of dice, uh, representing different levels of command and control within the, the armies. Um, so not not specifically the skill of the general, but more the, the skill of the staff officers, the organisation, the communication, how they are at getting orders written effectively and then disseminated to the battalions so that the individual formations go where they're meant to. Uh, so you, you roll a die and you look it up on the appropriate colour table for your army. Um, and the, the this table shows the, the five levels. Uh, from yellow, which is the uh, the poorest, the the least at well organised, um, across to black, which is the the best, the the most well structured and, and well written, well organised armies. Um, uh, and as you can see, the same score on on a dice will give you a very different result um, depending on which column you're looking at. So, uh, for example, a two. If you roll a two on the black column, uh, you get to move five of your formations. Uh, and you even get to auto rally some disorder off three of them. Uh, if you if you are a, an average army on, with a red dice, you will get to move three units and, and rally one. Um, if you're a really poor army with a yellow die, then not only do you not get to to move any units, um, then any of them that are close to the enemy uh, will have to take a morale test. So there's been some sort of command or control uh, mess up, uh, and the, your units are confused and frightened. So this mechanism gives uh, a, a way of um, adjusting the effectiveness of the command and control of your of your armies. Um, the mathematically minded among you will will probably notice that the same effect could have been achieved uh, simply by having a single column and pluses and minuses for the different generals, different armies. Um, but Manny, when he designed these rules, decided to have these five colour levels. Um, and although I'm a mathematician, I do agree with him because this gives much more flavour and it's actually a great deal more memorable um, to say that your army has got a black decision die, that it's it's effective at command and control, or that it's uh, really poor, it's blue or yellow. Um, so it, it adds a bit more flavour and, and a memorability to the uh, the process. Now there are a couple of ways in which the score on the decision die can be um, affected. Um, and you can see these on the, the, the little table at the bottom now. Um, one of these is uh, based on the size of your force command. Um, because the, 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 decision, the, the raw decision die mechanism gives you a, a, a number, an absolute number, you can move three or you can move four battalions. Um, if you've got a very small force command, which maybe only has three or four battalions, you would wind up in a position where you almost always got to move almost all your units. Um, and that was regarded as unrealistic. Um, so this rule says that if your force command has fewer than nine uh, formations within it, then you lose one or more pips off your off your die. So if it's if you've got seven or eight uh, battalions, you lose one. If you've got five or six, you lose two, and so on. Um, the uh, as I say, the the game reason is that otherwise there would be very little. Um, uh, to, uh, very little variation in the uh, number of units you got to move each turn with small uh, formations. Um, justification for this in real world terms is that if you've only got three or four battalions in your brigade then you've got uh, that many fewer staff officers, uh, smaller communications network and so on and I guess that's probably fair enough uh, but it's certainly effective. The other um, adjustment to the uh, de uh, decision dice roll um, is based on decorated leaders and uh, I mentioned elsewhere in uh, other videos this concept of decorated leaders quite important. Uh, leaders are something that, that are given to you uh, typically as part of the scenario and assigned to a force command uh, and you as the the general have a choice when you get your leaders. One thing you can do with them is place them with the individual battalions where they uh, help to rally off uh, disorder and make the battalion more resilient. 
Uh, the other thing you can do with them, which is relevant here, is you can place them with the brigade headquarters, and each leader um, placed with the brigade headquarters uh, adds one to the decision dice pip. So uh, the effect of that is that um, these officers, which in this case are intended to represent experienced staff officers, people who are good at writing orders which are understandable and which will be obeyed, uh, good at communications and good at uh, making troops go where they're meant to. Um, those officers will help in deploying the, the troops. So uh, putting your decorated leaders at, at uh, Brigade HQ uh, will give you more effective command and control, but you lose the, the, the effect that they might have had uh, at the front line. Okay, now the, there's another way in which the decision dice can be used to affect the performance of an army, um, as opposed to the, the pluses and minuses to the actual roll, and that is by colour shifts. So I've spoken so far as if uh, your force will always have the same colour decision die, the dice across all its formations, all its force commands. And that is normally the case, um, particularly if it's a homogeneous force, you know, a British division with a number of British brigades within it. But there's nothing at all to stop you having um, a force command within your army which has got a different uh, dice. And uh, this very often happens, particularly if you have forces, uh, brigades from different nationalities. The, the, the classic example, which turns up in quite a lot of scenarios in the Western Desert, is where the Axis forces have perhaps an Africa Corps brigade fighting alongside an Italian brigade. Uh, and in that case, very often the, the German units, the German force command will be given, a, say, a, let's say, a white dice, and the Italian unit will be given a blue one. To represent the less effective command and control and organisation um, of the uh, of their forces. Another way in which dice shifts uh, are used, dice colour shifts, is uh, when losses are taken. So um, if you uh, lose 25% of the battalions within your force command, then your dice colour shifts down one. So if you were on a white dice with and you had eight uh, battalions and you lose two of them. Uh, either to surrender or more likely because they've panicked and, and left the field, um, then you will start to use uh, one lower colour, in other words, a red dice for your future uh, dice rolls. So um, y your command and control becomes worse. The uh, real world reason for that is that uh, the losses have meant a breakdown of communications and networks, a loss of staff officers and senior officers generally, which has meant the communications it becomes less effective. And if you get down to 50%, you shift another uh, dice colour uh, worse off and so on. A um, uh, final way in which the, the dice colours are used is for ad hoc adjustments to the effectiveness of your army. And, and again, a classic example for this is surprise. Um, there are several scenarios uh, I'm aware of, for example, where a, a force is surprised and for the first turns, maybe the first couple of hours of the of the fight, um, they use a, a, a die colour um, poorer than the normal one. So if they are, for example, you know, an army with a red dice, um, while they are uh, in surprise, while they're still trying to work out what's happening and organise themselves, then they may roll a blue dice instead to represent the uh, less effective um, deployment of the troops uh, while the surprise is, is still lasting. So as you can see, th this mechanism allows um, some fairly subtle ways of, of adjusting the uh, effectiveness of, of your army overall and for individual force commands um, to try and represent the different ways in which the, uh, the organisation, the staff officers, the communications processes within a particular army affected their performance on the field.